Hundreds of thousands marched in London to protest against proposed cuts in NHS funding in one of the biggest demonstrations in history on this subject. It's been fuelled by warnings of £20 billion worth of cuts by 2020. Representatives of the British Medical Association Council said it was a cry for help, claiming patients are not getting the care they deserve, even though the country can afford it. The martyrs aimed to give a wake-up call to the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. Organisers said the national demonstration was a call to arms for those who care about the NHS, as more austerity in the health service represents a real risk to the safety of patients and the service. Campaigners, medics, students and union representatives, amongst others, marched to Parliament Square in Westminster, where Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn addressed the crowd. Mr Corbyn claimed the NHS is not in crisis because of overspending, but because of underfunding. And he argued that this crisis had been caused in Downing Street. Union leaders on the march said many NHS services are on their knees already, and that nearly two-thirds of services in England could be cut, and that was already at breaking point. The government rejected these warnings, labelling the reports a triumph of personal bias over the research. But protesters booed as they passed Downing Street, where uniformed officers stood behind barriers at the nearby health department. One demonstrator even stood next to a coffin on the march, suggesting privatisation would be very damaging to the NHS. Is it necessary to cut NHS spending? And should privatisation of part or all of the NHS's services be considered? Simple questions with important answers. An estimated 200,000 plus people marched to protest against further cuts to the NHS. Why are so many people worried about the future of the NHS? We asked them. To be honest, I think so many people are worried about the future NHS is because it's obviously in decline at the moment. It's getting worse, waiting times are getting longer. Um, I think the pressure on the NHS is growing. Uh, more people are trying to use it. I don't think they're increasing the re resources to combat the extra pressure on the NHS at the moment. So I think people are just worried about where it's going at the moment, if I'm honest. I think it's because London is so possibly overpopulated and there's just not enough there are not enough people, there's not enough hospitals, there's not enough staff to, to, to take on board that amount of people. I think it's just a general view that the lack of funding, the fear for jobs, lack of provision of care, and I think it's a very real concern that people have. So I support them. Some members of my family who work in the NHS, so um, I, can, I can probably comment first, Dan, you know, they tell me it's, uh, it's very tight, you know, it's tough to work, all the junior doctors are underpaid and they're all feeling the pinch. Uh, and don't get me wrong, this country is feeling the pinch generally, but it's very... Um, people are worried for their futures and being able to get the free health from it. Because it's not coping, is it? We've, we've still got large-scale immigration and um, there's not enough money for the NHS now and more people are living to be old and there's just not enough money to go around now. I think people are frightened it's just going to fold. Yeah, because it's something that concerns all people in the UK. Like, they should not be cutting the, uh, the NHS. Yeah, that's my opinion, I think. so. There are still lots of problems about NHS. And they should support it more, not uh, decrease the fund. Because they don't have enough funding. I think there's a lot of inefficiency in NHS and the, the government is cutting the budget so I think if they manage it efficiently then uh, I think NHS is a great service and that's why I think people are marching. Well first and foremost you know people are worried about patient safety, they're worried about their friends and family's safety and they're worried because the NHS is currently being, um, well it's on its last legs, it's being cut to the bone instead of being given the funding that it not only deserves but needs to provide good quality health care to the people of Britain. Um, doctors know this, patients know this, nurses know this as well. The, the kind of day-to-day -day pressure which the NHS is facing is becoming too much to handle. My, uh, my local hospital, Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham, was um, on black alert over winter, as were many, many other hospitals. And you would think that something like this would um, 
you know, make Theresa May acknowledge the reality here, that she needs to halt this kind of mindless austerity that is damaging our NHS, and by implication, killing tens of thousands of people as well. I think there's a growing awareness there's a problem with the NHS. There are continuous negative headlines about how the service is suffering. There's also more information available via social media. Um, the public have every right to be worried because the service is being cut and maybe their personal experience is showing how it's harder to get an appointment with the GP and friends and family may also have suffered delays in getting treatment. The Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine reported a study which claimed relentless government cuts may have caused up to 30,000 deaths in 2015. What does the public think of this? Well, that's the, obviously the first time I've heard something like that before. Um, I think, to me, personally, I think things like that are just scaremongering. I think it's hard to prove stats like that. It's obviously just an assumption based on figures that people want to make up or invent to back up their claims, if I'm honest. So I'm not quite sure about the truth behind those sort of figures myself. Well, I think that obviously you have to make sure that you have the right statistical data to prove that. But um, I think that one doesn't go without the other. If you have a lack of funding, lack of support, lack of management, then it just goes that people are going to suffer. And as a consequence, people will die. So again, this all supports people's deep rooted fears. I think you can always say, you know, cuts contributed to something. Um, but, you know, the reality is if you're overstretched, you're going to, you know, have mishaps and whatnot else. Um, I don't think, you know, obviously accidents can cause deaths, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be because of the cuts. Um, I think the cuts are, you know, putting a strain onto resources. And, you know, yes, it could make mistakes, but I don't think the deaths are through mistakes, nor through lack of ability to get the treatment they need. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. 30,000 deaths because of lack of care. And I suppose the... the um Weekend deaths have been commented on, haven't they? That if you go into hospital at the weekend, there are no doctors there and people die over the weekend. That's, that's really all I know about that. That's insane. Um, I, I think they don't care anymore about people, about the health and all. They, they think that they don't care about people anymore in the UK. So it's going. And I can see it's worse now, the NHS, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a high uh, percent, I think. Uh, um, maybe uh, some questionnaires uh, should be uh, taken to understand the causes and they should try to solve it. Well, I don't know if the statistics or how they arrive at those statistics, but I do think that they don't have enough uh, government support. A lot of these, I mean, a lot of these tests could be prevented by simple tests, and uh, which NHS is as a big organization can have it. So, I mean, uh, I think if, 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 they, if they basically manage their consultancies well, then they should be able to cut most of these deaths. Well, it was um, a very well-detailed academic study. It was well-researched and it showed a clear link between the cuts which we are seeing to the NHS and the increase in mortality rates. The year that they studied, I think it was 2015, um, you know, we, we haven't seen an increase percentage-wise like that for 50 years, so it is quite unprecedented. Um, we saw the highest mortality rate since 2008, and if you put that into context with an ageing population, um, you know, the NHS and its patients are becoming more and more dependent on well-funded social care. So what, what, what did our friends in the Conservative government do over their term? It's been, well, they've been slashing social care spending by 17%. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist to realise that conservative austerity is quite literally killing this country. Well, this is an extremely worrying study. It was conducted by researchers at Oxford and in London. And what it showed was these excess deaths could not be accounted for by any other factor like environment, like an out, outbreak of flu or very bad weather conditions. And the government should be extremely worried about this finding in the study. Instead, the government are dismissing the study rather than taking it seriously. I believe it is directly related to the cuts in health and social care funding and the public should be alarmed. What does the public feel about the government's austerity agenda? 
and does it mean cuts are needed in the National Health Service and why? I don't think cuts in NHS is a good thing if I'm honest. I think it's just going to put extra pressure on the doctors and the nurse and the infrastructure in place. So I, th I think they need to be opposite. I think we need to increase the, the funding for NHS rather than cuts at the moment. Well, no, ideally no. I mean, ideally they should put more money into the NHS um, just to help the people, especially the elderly. I've got a friend whose mother is, is stuck in a hospital because she can't get into her home because, um, because she needs a care home and the system takes so long and it's so expensive and so much money. You have to sell your home just to get into a home when you've scrimped and scraped for years. And that is quite sad, not having the good quality care homes. No, I think that the government should support the NHS fully, wholeheartedly, and any cuts made should not be at the cost of staffing and provision of care. Obviously, I don't think the NHS is going to get cut per se, but it definitely needs um, an increase in funding. Uh, and I think it's getting the increase it needs in the last budget as of last week. Um, so I don't think there's necessarily a problem with that side of things. They're not going to have to make cuts to the NHS. I think they're going to have to introduce levies. I, I genuinely think it cannot be free at the point of, you, you know, um, it's, it's always been held as almost sacred that it stays free, but I don't think we can afford to do that anymore. I don't know if they need or not, but I, I think they're not allowed to do so. You have, they have to ask people first. They, ha they, they have to ask our opinions. Health is really important and everybody should access it easily and uh, I think it's the main task of a government. No, they shouldn't. Why? Because the NHS is very important, it's very important in this country and it should be fully supported. Definitely, you, government is not an infinite resource so you cannot spend all and all and all. There has to be some austerity but NHS is a fundamental lifeline of Britain. I mean, and uh, definitely government can make some savings to not cut the NHS. Well, like uh, like all austerity, austerity to the NHS, that is a political choice. Uh, the people who say it's about economics or about um, balancing the books often conveniently forget that the UK spends a lot less of its national income on healthcare than most of its Western neighbours. Um, the motives behind this to me are quite simple. It's about privatisation. Um, if you put it into context, you know, we have a Tory cabinet, a few of which have contributed to debates on privatisation before, gleefully stripping back the NHS to its bare bones. And it was Noam Chomsky who kind of gave a uh, cookie cutter technique for privatisation. It was defund it to the extent that people get angry and they get really, really concerned and they demand a change. And then you offer up privatisation or outsourcing is an easy solution. Austerity is a political decision. By cutting funding to public services like the NHS, you are eroding the service that the people get. And as a result, this is damaging the health of the public. But we know that if you invest money in public services like health and education, that is good for the economy. So the policy of the government using austerity is actually really a smokescreen for dismantling public services and dismantling the welfare state and pushing more and more activity into the hands of the private sector. So this is not in the public interest. This is in the interest of a very small minority uh, who are dominating our democracy. It is claimed 250,000 people were on the march in London, coming there from across the country. At the same time, researchers said relentless cuts could have contributed to 30,000 deaths in 2015. The British Medical Association added that the NHS faces £26 billion of health and social care cuts due to political decisions. Should the National Health Service be free to everyone at the point of entry? Or is privatisation the future? Here are the public's views. I think, if I'm honest, it shouldn't be free to all people. I think there should be a waiting time to be able to use the NHS, either it's nine months, 12 months, whatever. I think too many people come to the UK to take advantage of the free NHS healthcare here. So if I'm, if I'm honest, of all, I believe that there should be a waiting period where you contribute to society before you can take advantage of our right. NHS. 
Well, I think they've got to be a bit careful. I don't think it's fair that people just come in to use the NHS. I think if people come in and they work, they pay their tax, then yeah, they should be entitled to the NHS. Maybe over certain many years, you know, not just to come for a year. I think if you're going to live here and work here, then yeah, you should be entitled to, to go on the NHS, yeah. I think it's something that should be looked at but uh, there's something that we've always prided ourselves on, which is a free healthcare system for all, so. There's definitely uh, some, some manoeuvre needed on prioritisation. I think, you know, obviously, there's a number of people that go to A&E, uh, as an example, that obviously need urgent support. And there's a number that probably don't need urgent, and it's probably self-inflicted. And, you know, yes, pain and suffering is not what anyone wants to have. Um, it's just about finding the right balance between the two. There's never a, a right or wrong, really, I guess, with these things. Because it's the way we've always been since it started. I, I think, in theory, it should be free to everybody because that was the whole ethos of the National Health Service, but I don't think it's working now. No, no, it should be free to all people. We're humans, so anyone can be allowed to get the uh, NHS service. I'm not sure uh, if it should be free. Uh, yeah, we we can discuss about it, but um, I don't agree uh, cutting money from NHS is a good idea. And do you think it should be privatized? Yeah, it shouldn't be privatized, but uh, I'm not sure about being free to everybody. Yeah, we should pay, uh, but we should still be supported by the government. I think a mixture of the two. Given that privatization is there in most of the other countries, but I would feel taking the NHS service for the last 10 years, NHS should be free. It should be free at the point of use. Um, you know, I, I don't think the people of Britain would be happy with our government outsourcing lots of different NHS services for big business to kind of um, earn some money off the back of ordinary working people. I mean, look at the healthcare system in America where people are paying thousands of pounds for operations, treatments and medicine that we get for free here and by privatising the NHS you would be attacking the very poorest in society, those who are already living precariously, uh, whether it's through kind of zero hours contracts or extortionate rents, these are the people who wouldn't be able to afford treatment if they so desperately needed it and um, the Attlee government created the NHS to be free at the point of use and that's the way it should stay. The NHS has been shown over its 70 year history to be one of the most cost effective services in the world. It should remain a public service, free at the point of need. Privatisation is a disaster for the public. It will be more expensive, more complicated and waste a lot more money in bureaucracy and management, diverting resource away from delivering care. And the privatised system is also endemically fraudulent it introduces a conflict of interest between the doctor and the patient. No longer will he be putting the patient's interest first. There will be other factors such as working for the private provider and also enabling profit to be created. So this is the wrong direction. We need to return to a national health service which is fully, fully nationalised. The British Red Cross said the National Health Service faces a humanitarian crisis from underfunding and rising demand. Why does the government not give adequate funding to the National Health Service? I think they're putting all the money they can in there and I think they're looking for quick fix solutions by underfunding certain aspects of NHS, whereas a whole they should look at the root problem, which is just too many people using NHS, if I'm honest. It's not a funding issue, it's just cutting the pressure that is people being wise of when they should use NHS, A&E, situations like that. Maybe uh, they're putting too much money in, into other things, or maybe there's not enough money, maybe they should just print some more money and put it into the NHS, because I do think it's, uh, we're really fortunate to have that. I have no idea why the government isn't funding the NHS adequately. That's something that the politicians need to, to look at and answer to the people to. But certainly people pay enough taxes to support it and uh, I think it's a very great shame that the, there is so much pressure and so much uh, tension. So I feel for people who work for the NHS particularly, I think they have a very difficult task and they do a magnificent job. So I wish them all well. The government budget by itself has a big deficit every year. And you know, by 
making a load more in kind of optimizing the, the deficits and optimization of you know using the resources in the right way you know you can definitely achieve bigger things obviously experienced doctors cost a lot of money and um, to get the right quality you need to pay the right price and I, I don't think they're cutting it it's just um, the way things are I'm not sure perhaps the money goes elsewhere perhaps they haven't enough money I don't think the government knows which way to jump there are so many things needing funding and um, there's only so much money in the kitty and some of it has to go into things like education and housing and there are just so many priorities at the moment and I don't know which is the most important of the priorities. I'm not a British person, I'm a foreigner. Before coming here I paid for NHS, maybe a little money but I paid and I can go and see a GP here even I'm a foreigner because they have a lot of other commitments, but I think they need to make the NHS a priority. I think they should find some, some, some budget somewhere to, to, to fund NHS. Otherwise, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I would not be very happy in the sense if NHS uh, goes privatised. Well, it's because this government is in the pocket of big business. I mean, if you look at the Chomsky model, which I mentioned earlier, it really does play out quite accurately. And we've seen in the budget recently, Philip Hammond's spring budget, that there is more talk of backdoor privatisation to the NHS already. And I think it's quite ironic that the Conservatives have the gall to accuse Labour and other political parties of using the NHS as a political chess piece, when in reality it's their incessant cuts to the NHS which are keeping it on the news agenda every single day. They're ignoring advice from doctors, nurses, medical professionals, researchers, academics, pretty much everybody who isn't in the Conservative Party. They're ignoring all of their advice to fund the NHS adequately. Instead, they're pursuing an agenda of rolling back the state, and by doing so, they're damaging a national institution. The way to privatise any public service is by restricting funding, making the service fail, and destroying the public's trust in the service. Since 2010, there has been a squeeze on funding to the NHS. We've been getting less than 1% increase per year. Historically, it should be an average of 4%. And in the last five, six years, the funding has been stretched, staff are struggling, and patients are getting a worse service. This is a deliberate defunding strategy by government in order to cause the NHS to collapse. And the public need to see that they're being set up for a conversion to an American-style insurance system which will be more expensive, deliver worse outcomes and you will no longer be able to trust the delivery of the service. Hundreds of thousands of people, including NHS workers, campaigners and union representatives, marched in London to protest against yet more austerity in the health service. They feared cuts, cutbacks and the threat of privatisation. Despite these energetic and very public protests, the government refuses to accept that these worries are justified. Either the protesters or the government are right. If it turns out to be the protesters, there's a very real danger that their concerns will be measured in deaths, which would have been prevented by a better funded NHS.